in the last lesson, we learned how to skip count by the number 10. And we said that the, the rule for counting by 10 is, let's say you have the number 41 and you want it to keep going, then that number here never changes. It stays a 1 and only this number here on the left side will change. So it'll become a, from a 4 to a 5 to a 6, to a 7. That was the pattern that we learned last time. Now, how do you remember this? Well, 10 has one zero in it, so one number stays the same. Okay, so one zero, one number stays the same, right? Makes sense. In 100, look at 100. How many zeros are there in 100? There's two zeros. So you know what? Two numbers on the end are going to stay the same. Let's see how to do that. So in this example here, if we were to draw bills, if we were to draw a line for each bill, then we would do, how many lines do we need then? We need, let's see, one, two, three, four, five. We're going to ignore this 10 here. We're not going to deal with him at all. So we're going to have five lines. We need a starting number. So may as well start with 100. And then the rule is, since there's two zeros in 100, you want to hold you want to keep these two numbers the same. So you're going to write 0, 0 on all of these. And then the only thing that changes is the number in front. So this 1 becomes a 2, and then a 3, and then a 4, and then you got a 5. So we have $500. Now let's say we wanted to throw in this 10 at the end. Okay, so now let's combine the last rule with this one. How do you count by tens now? So we're done counting by hundreds. We've done this one, this one, this one, all of these. Now we want to count by tens again. So we have to use the rule for 10, which is hold only the last number. Okay, now now pay close attention here because this could get tricky. Counting by 10, you hold on to just the last number. If you got good at this, that's no problem. And then what do you change? You change everything on the left of it. So we have 50 over here. We have to look at both of them. What does 50 become? 51. Very good. Let's do another example. So, by the way, if you were to count all this money, it would be $510. Here's another example. Let's start at, what's a good number to start at? Let me think here. Let's start at 321. And the question is, count by 100. So, count by a hundred. So again, a hundred has two zeros in it, so we're going to hold on to two numbers. So the 21 is going to stay the same. Don't change the 21. The only thing that changes is that number sitting in front. So it's going to go from a 3 to a 4 to a 5 to a 6 to a 7. So if we were to count by a hundred, we're going to get to 721 in the very end after we fill all these in. Let's try this one. Let's try 648. And I'm going to put numbers to the front and numbers to the back. I hope you guys are doing this too. Make sure you're writing all this down. So count by 100. The rule for counting by 100 is you hold on to the last two numbers because there's two zeros. So we'll put 48 and we'll write 48 on all of them. That's never going to change. You can count by hundreds till tomorrow and that 48 is always going to stay there. So what do we change? Well you change this number. Everything to the left of it is going to change. So from a 6 to a 7, 8 and then 9. And then going backwards you're going to go 6, 5, 4 and 3. Now you try these three on your own. Three questions, pause the video, and come back when you're ready. Okay, we're back. For the first example, you should have done this. You should have realized right away, since we're counting by 100, that because there's two zeros in 100, you're going to hold on to the two numbers in the end. So you're going to keep it 80, 80, 80, and then before it, you're going to write 80 and 80. And then you should have realized that you change everything on the left side. So the 9 is going to change. It's going to become, let's see here, we're going forward. So it's going to become a 10, and then an 11, and then a 12. 
So we get 1,080, 1,180, 1,280. By the way, guys, like I, I've mentioned this before, if you have a hard time reading these, then we're going to be doing a lesson later on on how to do that. So for now, just understand the patterns. Now going backwards, the 9 over here becomes an 8. So we get an 8, and then a 7. And that's the answer for the first row. How about the second row? Again, the pattern is the last two numbers never change. So the 28 is going to stay. 28. And then on the left here, it's going to be 28 and 28. They never change. The only thing that changes is that 4. So the 4 will become a 5, and then a 6, and then a 7. And then going backwards, it will become from a 4 to a 3, and then a 2. How about the last one? This is probably the hardest one. So the pattern stays the same. The last two numbers, they never change. But you know, there's only two numbers. Well, do it the same way. Write 32 in all of them. Because you know it has to be the last two numbers. They're all going to be 32. So the pattern says everything on the left side here, so on the left of this underlined number, that's going to change. But there's nothing there. You know why there's nothing there? Because that's a zero. There's nothing there. It's a zero. So what's the next number going to be? Well, it's going to be 1. So you go from 32 to 132. And then the 1 becomes a 2, then a 3, and then a 4. In this last example here, we're comparing counting by tens with counting by hundreds. So do these examples here. I mean, this is the ultimate test. If you can do this, then you're really like, you're, you're awesome right now. Pause the video, see how well you could do, and come back in a moment. Okay, we're back. So counting by tens, let's review this one more time here. You should have realized right away, counting by tens, there's one zero, so you're going to hold on to one number. And that's going to be six along the whole way here. And then, the only thing that changes is everything to the left. Everything. So, this here is going to change from a 48 to a 49 to a 50, to a 51. Now let's compare it on the other side. Counting by 100, well there's two zeros in 100, so you hold on to two numbers, and they never change. 86, 86, 86. So what does change? Everything to the left of it. The 4. So the 4 becomes a 5, 6, and then 7. Let's do the, the, ne the next one here. So 52, counting by 10s, only one number stays the same, so it's 2, 2, 2. And then the 5 becomes a 6, a 7, and an 8. Going on with this one, counting by hundreds, the same number, 52 and 52. Two numbers stay the same, so 52, 52, 52. So what changes? Everything to the left of it, but there's nothing there. You know why? Because it's a 0. I hope you recognize that. Good job if you did. The 0 becomes a 1, and then a 2, and then a 3. And the last one here, 781, counting by 10. So the 1, you hold on to it. And the only thing that changes is everything to the left of the 1. So don't circle just the 7. It's going to be the 7 and the 8. That's 78. So the one more up becomes 79 and then 80. And then going to the left, you get 77 and 76. And now let's move on to this one. Same number, 781, but we're counting by 100. So hold on to two numbers, and then that 81 is going to sit there. And the only thing that changes now is everything to the left of that 81. So it's only a 7. So the 7 becomes an 8, and then a 9, and then go backwards from a 7 to a 6 to a 5.